Hey everybody, Dewey here. Welcome back to Deck Building Deep Dive, where we scour Yu-Gi-Oh's 10,000 card card pool for potential tech options to play with a particular archetype. Today we're talking about the upcoming mill-focused Mysterune archetype, partly because my favorite variant, Mysterune Aurorodon, is now dead with the new May 2022 ban list. Mysterune, if you're not familiar, revolves around eight different quick play spells, which all have two effects that you get to choose from at the cost of your next battle phase. The first effect is unique to each quick play and additionally banishes cards from the top of your opponent's deck as part of that effect. The second effect of each quick play is identical. They can special summon one of the archetype's three fusion monsters to the extra monster zone. This video is going to focus on that latter effect, because when half of the deck is effectively instant fusion, we can get up to some shenanigans. We're going to focus on four cards today and how they interact with our three fusion monsters. Ties of the Brethren, Downbeat, and Transmodify. Ties of the Brethren says that you can pay 2,000 life points and then target one level 4 or lower monster you control, and for the rest of the turn after this resolves, you cannot special summon monsters, but you get to special summon two monsters from your deck with the same type, attribute, and level as that monster, but with different names from that monster and from each other. You can't use your battle phase the turn you use this card, but in this room, you're not going to be doing that anyway. Um, so this means we have access to level 2 light fairies, level 3 light fairies, and level 4 dark beasts. Uh, downbeat is similar in that you tribute one face-up monster, and then you special summon from your deck one monster with the same original type and attribute as that tributed monster, but one level lower than its original level. So that means we'll have access to level 1 light fairies, level 2 light fairies, and level 3 dark beasts. And finally, there's Transmodify, which is like Downbeat, but in the opposite direction. So instead of special summoning a monster that's one level lower, you'll special summon one that's one level higher. So if you're very perceptive, you might have noticed here that because Munin and Hugin are only one level apart, there's overlap in targets between Ties and Downbeat and Transmodify. If it's a level 2 Light Fairy you're after, you can play both Ties on Hugin or Downbeat on Munin. If it's level 3 Light Fairies you want, you can play both Ties on Munin or Transmodify on Hugin. And though these cards aren't searchable, the fact that you can play 6 cards to get to what you want and then do your typical Mr. Rune shenanigans to draw 3 cards every turn means you're fairly likely to see them. Add to the mix cards like Reasoning and Monster Gate, and you'll be well on your way. The last card we're going to touch on is a very special card. It's called Spirit Sculptor, and it says you can tribute 1 monster Add one monster from your deck to your hand whose combined original attack and defense equals the combined original attack and defense of the tributed monster. This involves some complicated math, uh, and there's not a good calculator for it online, so, so I'm going to let you know of some of the targets that I've come up with, but I'm sure that you can think of more. So first up we have level 1 light fairies, which you can access by activating downbeat and tributing a Hugin you control. The first target, which I think is pretty strong, especially in this format, is Consecrated Light. It's a level 1 light fairy that says neither player can normal or special summon dark monsters or declare an attack with a dark monster. This card cannot be destroyed by battle with a dark monster, which kind of redundant, but that's okay. And also you take no battle damage from that battle. So. This is very good against decks like Despia, which are almost exclusively dark monsters. Use it as you will. Time Maiden, which is very useful in Time Lord decks. Uh, you'll see later that Spirit Sculptor can get you to any of the Time Lords. The problem with this strategy is that Time Lords usually need to attack and you will not have a battle phase, so plan accordingly. Angel 01 can be useful for tribute summoning high level fairies. You know, there are some good floodgates in the game. Uh, Marsh Macaron can be useful for stalling, which is pretty useful in Mr. Rune if you're trying to deck out your opponent. Ava, if it becomes unbanned, lets you keep gaining advantage. This Valkyrie card that I don't know how to say. Um, there's some other Valkyrie cards on this list, so you could actually get a lot of Valkyries on the field. The problem is that they normally need to attack to do their thing, and they will not be able to. Trickstar Nightshade lets you link climb. If you're doing Trickstar things, you could also burn your opponent instead of just trying to deck them out if you want to frustrate them in multiple ways. Cupid Volley um, lets you send cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard if you're trying to load up your graveyard with spells so that you can draw more off of your field spell. This could be useful. Freya lets you boost attack and defense. Could make it harder for people to get over your Munin. And then Super Quantal Fairy Alfin. I'm not sure how to play Super Quant, but maybe the very smart people in the comments can tell me how. All right, next up we have level two light fairies. And remember, you can access these through either Ties of the Brethren or Downbeat. Diviner of the Herald, very good level two light fairy. It's also a tuner if you wanted to do some synchro plays. Cyber Petite Angel, 
and Cyber Egg Angel. If you're summoning these off of ties, you're going to get to add a bunch of cards to your hand, but you will not be able to activate them that turn because you will not be able to special summon. Recently released Light Law Medium forces your opponent to attack and then inflicts some damage to them in the process. Lee the World Chalice Fairy, very good in World Chalice decks, lets you Link Climb a whole lot. And then another Valkyrie card that is also very hard to say. Next up we have level three Light Fairies. Uh, these can be accessed through either Ties or Transmodify on Hugin. The first is Weather Painter Thunder. If you are doing a Weather Painter strategy, this could be sort of fun because you can add a continuous spell off of Munin first, and then you'll have something to send to the graveyard with Thunder. Agent of Creation Venus, very good in Agent's decks. Both Banisher of the Radiance and Banisher of the Light have the same effect. Any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. You can summon two of them just to be extra frustrating. Tell Us the Little Angel is a newer card. I haven't seen anybody use it, but it seems very cool. Uh, just a reminder that Destiny Hero Plasma has 600 defense and therefore is searchable off of Cupid Pitch, so you could get it into your hand. If you got this onto the field or in the graveyard, you could then summon a bunch of tokens and have uh, walking skill drain on the field. Another Valkyrie card, which is also very hard to say. A Fairy Archer lets you burn your opponent. Marshmallow, which is similar to Marsh Macaron. Um, is very hard to kill and also burns your opponent. Trust Guardian, which gives your synchro monster that you use with it as a tuner uh, battle protection. Trickstar Licorice, another key card in Trickstar strategies. This one also burns your opponent. Next up is level four Light Fairies, which I think maybe have a lot of synergy with this deck. So the first is the Barrier Statue of the Heavens. People know and hate barrier statues because they prevent your opponent from playing the game. Similar to Barrier Statue of the Heavens is Aurora Paragon, which has neither player can special summon monsters. But when any monster is normal summoned anywhere, this card is destroyed. You can protect it one time from being destroyed with Hugin, as long as you just chain a quick play to whatever is going to summon Aurora Paragon, and then Hugin can replace the destruction with itself. But after that, you won't be able to do it anymore but you might not need to. Spirit Sculptor, we discussed. Um, this is both a target to be brought out with Transmodify and then can also search other things. Um, Ra's Disciple can get a lot of bodies on board. If for some reason you are playing an Egyptian Gods deck, you could use this card. All of the counter fairies are level four light fairies. So if you are playing counter traps along with your mystery room cards, you could bring these out. The Melodious Ladies are level four light fairies. Honest is a level four light fairy. Uh, which can be good because it can return itself to the hand after being special summoned and then can be used to protect one of your light monsters that was special summoned from the extra deck. Another Valkyrie card, and if this one is special summoned, you get to add a Valkyrie card from your deck to your hand. Uh, Condemned Maiden lets you activate a quick play spell from your hand, which is kind of redundant with the field spell, but if your field spell gets removed, this might let you still do that. And then Goddess with the Third Eye is a fusion substitute monster and you can do with her what you will. And then finally, we'll go over the targets for Jerry. Um, there aren't a lot of good dark beasts in the game, uh, so we can do this pretty quickly. Of the level fours, there is Sprayan's Kit, which is the best one I would say, because it lets you get your Albaz stuff rolling. Then Aloof Lupine lets you recycle banished cards. Hypnocorn only activates on normal summon, probably not great, but you will need multiple targets if, if you're trying to use ties. And then there's Bicorn Reem, which lets you mill your opponent further if you use it as synchro material, but it is not itself a, tu a tuner, so that could be difficult. For downbeat, the only interesting target is Neo Spatian Dark Panther. If they have a very strong boss on board, you can just copy it. Transmodify target Interplanetary Purply Thorny Beast. It can bring itself back from the graveyard if something you control is destroyed by battle, but only one time and then it will be banished. But... All right, and then finally we have our Spirit Sculptor targets. So we can summon things with a combined attack of zero, 2000, or 1000. So some things that I have just pulled out of the ether, there are many more, are all of the Time Lords have zero attack and defense, as does Giga Ray's Gandora, which can gain a whole lot of attack for each banished card. Magician's Souls, which lets you gain more advantage by sending spell cards to the graveyard that you don't need. Effect Veiler, Hand Trap, Cyframe Gear Gamma, another great Hand Trap. Um, Lilith, Lady of Lament. If you are going to play traps, she can tribute herself to search them. All of the Drytrons, Token Collector, another good hand trap. Royal Magical Library, if you're doing a build that is going to just keep activating spells, which there are builds of Mystery that do this, this is a really nice card to get quickly. Labyrinth Stovey, if you're going to play the Labyrinth cards, this is very good for getting your engine online. Tribrigade Nerval, very great for getting Tribrigade things online. Um, Prank Kid Fanzies, 
Prank is having a hard time right now because Meow Moo is banned. And then Despian Comedy if you want to start getting Despia monsters into rotation. All right, everybody, that concludes our review of the targets for Ty's downbeat in Transmodify. Um, if there's any others you can think of, especially ones for Spirit Sculptor, drop a comment below and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this.